Hey everybody, it's Chelsea and today we are going to be talking about the highly anticipated topic of the true cost of vehicle dwelling life or nomadic lifestyle, van life, whatever you want to call it. Let's talk about what it costs to live on the road. Before we get started though, I would like to encourage you guys to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I post weekly nomadic videos of my travels as well as nomad tips and campground reviews from time to time. And it takes two seconds of your time, but it means the world to me. So please subscribe to my channel down below and let's get started. So I've been on the road since January 23rd of 2017 this year and I have this app that's called Expense OK where I can enter in every single thing that I spend money on on the road. It looks like this and there's different topics. What happens is, is you enter in the number, you push the category which it belongs to and then it will give you a pie chart of that month day or year for how much you have spent so i'm going to write this all out for you and hope that nothing is backwards so first things first we're going to talk about these five main expenses because these are my biggest expenses on the road in order. The car has definitely been my biggest expense and this is actually split between two categories. One being what I spend on gas money and what I actually spend on servicing the vehicle. When I write house, what I mean by that is my campground costs. What am I paying to actually be housed in a space for a night? Food is what I'm spending on groceries. Lunches is how often I am eating out and not making food for myself here at the camper. And then relaxation for me is anything from paying for horseback rides or extracurricular activities that I see that I want to do while I'm at different parks. This is a very poorly drawn but pretty accurate depiction of what I've spent on my car and again this goes into two different subjects being what I spent on fuel and what I've spent on servicing my vehicle. Now I want to explain this just a little bit so that there's some clarification. These numbers look pretty high. <laughs> To me, anyway. I did not anticipate having to spend any of this on services. However, if you're on the road, things are going to pop up and you're going to have to spend money that you didn't anticipate. And I think that this video is going to be a very realistic version um, of what you can anticipate spending on the road. I know a lot of people want to make van life seem very glamorous and easy and affordable all the time, which it can be. However, you're going to run into some situations where you're going to end up paying more money than you want to. So let's start down here with fuel. Fuel makes up 57% of my total car cost. This is the highest expense that I have. And this is just because I am moving around so much. When I first started this trip, I thought that I would spend anywhere from two to three weeks at a certain location and then move on. However, it's been six months and I've gone about 30,000 miles in total on my car. So I am spending a lot in gas. I'm moving every three to four days on average from location to location. And that kind of stuff adds up. Now let's talk about this some more. My car does not get good gas mileage. If you are living in a big rig or in a van, this price is going to change for you. My car is a 2000 Nissan Pathfinder with a towing capacity of, I believe, 5,000 pounds, okay? My camper trailer weighs 3,500 pounds dry. I'm up now to 5,000 pounds, so I have it at capacity. My car cannot pull any more than what it is pulling, and that has a huge effect on gas. In six months, I've traveled through, I think, about 20 states, the length of them, and some of them I've crossed through more than once. I'm moving every three to four days, and I've seen about half of the national parks that exist, all within six months. I've spent $3,592 on fuel. I'm not mad at that. I'm really not mad at that because this is the way that I think about it. If I were to be in one location and have to fly to each of those places that I've been to, 
as my travel expense, just like this is my mode of transportation and flying would be my mode of transportation. If I were to have to fly to all the places that I've been to, it would cost me way, way, way more money than $3,000. I think that I am traveling in one of the cheapest ways that a person can explore their country. If I were to fly to all of these places, I'm sure that the cost would be over $10,000. I'm not really mad at, the, at what I've spent on gas in the past six months. Moving on to the other topic though, the service, my car service, that is 43% of what I've spent on my car and that is, this number for six months is way higher than I anticipated. Let me explain. When I was in Texas, I had to get all new tires, four brand new tires for my Pathfinder, okay? That cost me around 600 something dollars. My starter went out while I was in Glacier, and so I had to get a new starter as well, which was also another $600-ish. While I was on my way Utah to Las Vegas, I had to get two new tires for my camper as well. This was only about $200. However, it still is a cost, and these things add up. So in six months, I've spent $2,719 on keeping up the well-being of the tires and my car in general, that being like oil changes, fluid checks, a new headlight, stuff like that. I'm a little bitter about that. I'm a little bitter about that because that is a cost that I did not anticipate at all. And that was probably just me being a little naive and thinking that, oh, the tires I have will definitely last me for a year. The tires on my camper were brand new. I put 30,000 miles on them, so I anticipated those going bad at 30,000 miles. Fine, camper tires don't really last that long anyway. I get it. That was a cost that I kind of anticipated. About $200 there. I did not anticipate having to get all four of my Pathfinder tires changed out. All of them had dry rot. It was a really bad situation and I had to do it. What can you do? If you're going to live on the road, you need wheels on your vehicle. So I had to shell out that money get new tires but now I feel good because now I know that all my tires are new and I don't have to worry about them for a very long time. There is a lot that I want to say on the subject of tires which is probably a really boring topic for a lot of you guys so I'm going to make that a completely separate video but car maintenance is in incredibly incredibly important. We'll talk about that some other time. So overall I have spent about six thousand dollars on my car in six months. That's a ton of money. However, the gas price I'm not really mad at, the service price I'm a little bitter about, but overall this is what you are looking at or this is at least what happened to me in the past six months. Like I said earlier, if you are in a van, the fuel price is probably going to change. Even if you are in a camper trailer like I am, if you are not moving around as often as I am, this is going to change. I think that I definitely think that I am on the high end when it comes to my fuel costs. I try to do a bunch of research about how I can make this go down. The next thing on this list is housing. I have spent $2,500 on housing in the last six months and I'd like to elaborate on this a little bit as well. First of all, I'm not incredibly mad at this price because had I been living in an apartment for six months, my rent was about $1,000 a month there, so I would have paid about $6,000 in six months for my apartment that I was living in before. So essentially, I consider the housing my rent, and for my rent to be $2,500 in a matter of six months does not bother me at all because here's the thing I know that I can make this price lower if I want to I know that I could be boondocking a lot more dry camping whatsoever like whatever you want to call it I could do that a lot more on BLM land and I think I'm gonna start doing that I'm gonna see if in the next six months of my travel I can cut this price in half. I think the reason that I've been so adamant about getting designated campgrounds for the first six months is because this was such a huge lifestyle change for me and such a big deal when it came to my panic disorder and anxiety and everything that I always wanted to make sure that I was in a safe 
place. So I would shell out, you know, anywhere from $15 to $30 a night to make sure that I was in a place that I felt safe. You guys know that I definitely have slept in BLM land for free. I have slept in truck stops and Walmarts as well, which are also free and not always the safest. However, for the most part, I wanted the peace of mind of knowing that I was in a campground with a campground host. There were other campers. I wasn't in the middle of nowhere. Things like that. You can call me a spoiled little girl if you want to. That's probably fair. But I just needed that for peace of mind while I was starting out. However, I feel a lot more comfortable on the road now. I do feel more capable of myself of protecting myself these days and so I do want to make it a point to try to lower this housing cost. But for those of you that want to live full time on the road and have electricity and water and be in a safe campground, more often than not, $2,500 in six months is probably what you're looking at for cost there. On the topic of groceries. This is my grocery cost for the past six months. I have spent $700 total at the grocery store from January to almost August. So I don't feel too bad about this. I could probably lower this, but then again, you have to keep in mind that there were times where I was feeding more than just myself. What can I say? There's not much else I can say about this. I do try to keep things as cheap as possible. I buy the $1 loaf of bread when I go to stores. I don't really eat meat that much, so I don't know. I don't know if this is average. I don't know if this is a lot, but this is what I've spent on the road. Eating out at restaurants. This is what I've spent in six months on the road eating out at restaurants. However, I do want to talk about this. I do want to say really fast, let me grab another little piece of paper real quick. When I lived at home in my hometown in South Carolina and I was working a full-time job, I probably spent an average, let's say I, I would probably spend about $12 a day on eating out. Okay, I'm sure a couple of you guys can relate to me here, at least I hope you do. When you go on lunch break, if you didn't bring your own lunch, you probably went out to like a sandwich shop or something or wherever and just got yourself a quick lunch while you were on break from work or maybe there were nights where you didn't feel like cooking and you went out to dinner. I know myself that I went out to eat for the majority of my food when I lived at home. I did not cook for myself very often. I was pretty bad about that. And so I just broke down the cost of this. And I hope some of you guys can relate to me and then compare this to what I've spent and think about whether or not it's reasonable. I used to spend about $12 a day on food, like eating out at restaurants. 12 times seven days a week is $84 a week. $84 a week times four weeks to make one month would be $336. $336 per month times the amount of time, the amount of months I've been out on the road, six months would be about $2,016, which means that I've spent significantly less money eating out on the road in six months than I would have if I stayed at home. The fact that I've spent $400 eating out at restaurants in six months compared to what I would have spent if I had stayed home. I'm not mad at that number. I'm not mad at that. So the last of the five main topics that I've spent money on is relaxation. I have spent $467 here. Let's talk about that. These are things that I was paying for to have the experience of doing these things. Whether or not that was kayaking at Little Manatee in Florida, bike rental in Hillsboro, snorkeling at Devil's Den, parking at the Alamo, renting sleds at the sand dunes. This is going to be a variable that some of you guys do not have to deal with. I travel with a dog, so I have the expense of traveling with a dog. 
I also have a large dog, so that is going to be more expensive when it comes to buying the amount of food that she needs. This has been my cost on the road for Banks. I have spent $724 on her in the past six months, okay? So every month I have to buy two big bags of food for her, which equals out to be about $90. There's also been a couple instances where I've had to take her to the vet to get treated for whatever. I still do have to get her annual shots and everything and her monthly flea and tick medications. So that's going to be a cost as well. Just keep this kind of stuff in mind. There are going to be unexpected instances of where you have to take your pet to the vet on the road, whether or not they're sick from drinking salt water in the ocean, or they've got diarrhea for three days, or whatever the case may be. These things are going to pop up. Keep that in mind. Another expense that I have that a lot of you guys probably won't have is a YouTube expense. As some of you guys know, on my Patreon account, if you pledge a certain amount every month, I will send you gifts and trinkets and stuff in the mail. On top of that, I have sent out a bunch of postcards to you guys and just in general spent some money on trying to make sure that my YouTube channel can be as close to me as possible. In that time, in the last six months, I have spent $422 on YouTube, whether or not that was gifts for you guys, postcards or stamps, souvenirs at national parks, and just things like that. But again, you guys probably won't have that cost, so write that one out. When it comes to other bills, I'm pretty fortunate because they're probably pretty low in comparison to other people's. My car is an old car and it's completely paid off. I do not have to make any payment on that per month. So that is a non-issue for me. My phone bill is through Verizon. I have an $80 a month phone bill for unlimited data, which is their new plan that I took advantage of. I did not have that when I started the trip, but I switched to it because it was much cheaper. I am I'm 25 years old so I'm still under my parents health insurance that will change next year and that will be a new expense that I have to incur. I do have student loans where I'm paying $300 a month for that to be paid down as much as possible and I do have memberships such as the annual pass for national parks which is eighty dollars a year i have a good sam club membership which gets which gets me ten percent off certain campgrounds i do have a koa membership was which was thirty dollars for the year which also gets me ten percent off of koa campgrounds. anyway that pretty much concludes the bulk of the cost and the money where my money is going on the road over the last six months some of these things are a little high and you guys won't have the same cost some of these costs you won't even have at all i just wanted to be as honest as possible about where my money is going on the road so that you have some idea of what you can anticipate if you are living on the road in the same style that i am living in keep in mind i do live in a camper trailer so my gas is going to be higher from hauling this thing and I did make sure that I paid for the first six months to get a safe campground as often as I possibly could to adjust to this life. However, like I said, I do want to cut that price in half over the next six months if I can and we'll see where I am again once my whole year has been completed. Thank you guys for watching. I hope this helped you guys. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I'll see you in the next one.